Welcome everyone to Blackboard Assessment Tools to Measure Student Achievements. I think we can go ahead and just get started. We'll take a look at what's on the agenda. Um, so we do have some introductions and icebreakers that we'll start with, and then we're just going to jump right into the content. So today it's all about using technology, um, specifically Blackboard Ultra, but we also want to look at ways that we can use it effectively. So it, it's a little bit of pedagogy, but it's also a little bit of technology together. And so I divided this into three segments. We're going to look at tests, assignments, and graded discussion boards in Blackboard Ultra. And we're going to look at ways that you can communicate with your students by providing feedback, um, options that you can use for engaging your students with images and multimedia in these graded assessments. Um, and then we're also going to look specifically at your grading strategies, uh, what you can do with the tools on hand. And after that, we'll go straight into a wrap up. So if there's anything you have questions on or if you wanted to see something specifically, uh, that would be a great time to let me know. All right, so now that I have you up, if you wouldn't mind, if you can type in the text chat, let us know um, your name, what do you teach, and then specifically, are there any types of challenges that you have with your assessments in your course? So I'll let you type on that for just a moment. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So, Tanya, you teach in the graduate nursing program. Ooh, that is a tough program. And so, Matt, you're doing legal research at the College of Law. Ooh, another tough program. Great. I love the diversity here. Uh, you want to learn about using the tools and Blackboard for more interactive assignments and faster grading and feedback. Oh, good. I, I think I have some things here for you. And Tanya, you just also want to learn other ways that you can interact with students. Fantastic. I, I hope I have some things for you. And my colleague is joining me, Dr. Yvonne Johnson. So she also is a teacher as well as a staff member here. Great. Good, I, I'm really excited about this. I'm glad that you're interested in learning about new tools, um, but also ways to be efficient and to manage that grading workload uh, for, for all of your courses. So I think we can go ahead and we can just get started. Oh, Stephanie, welcome back, thank you. And Stephanie also teaches in the nursing program. You just wanna review what you're doing and ideas for maybe some better solutions. Sure. Um, Sounds great. Let's see if I can provide some good examples for you. All right, so um, as we mentioned earlier, uh, this whole workshop is kind of divided into three segments. And so we're gonna go ahead and, and we'll start with the exams for no particular reason, but we'll go ahead and we'll jump in here. I suppose I should have asked, um, Maybe I should throw a poll in here really quickly too. Let me, let me throw this here. Give me one second. All 
point. I threw a poll onto the screen for you. No right or wrong answer, uh, but today's workshop is centered around Blackboard Ultra. So I was just curious, have any of you taught in Blackboard Ultra? Oh, good. All three of you have. Wonderful. Okay. So Blackboard Ultra is constantly being updated and they are releasing new features. So some of these might look familiar um, and some of them you might not have seen just yet. So one of your options that you do have with uh, Blackboard Ultra is this idea of automated feedback for an exam. An automated feedback works for any exam question that can be auto graded. So we're looking at things such as multiple choice, true, false, matching, um, those types of questions. If it's essay or short answer, those have to be manually graded by you, the instructor. Um, but for these other ones, Blackboard can do some of the work for you. And with the automated feedback, you can decide things like, do you want to give them feedback for a correct answer or an incorrect answer? Or you can also do this for um, partial credit questions. So in this example that you see on your screen here, you know, I asked them, well, what is the best color? And I only gave one correct answer. But theoretically here, what we could also do is I could have said, choose all that apply. And I could have said that, you know, blue and purple are the best colors. And if my student only got one of those correct, they would end up getting 50% of the points. So they would get five points total instead of the full 10. And Blackboard would still issue the automated feedback if I had selected that option for an incorrect answer. And that's because we've determined that the student really didn't fully master the concept. So that's something that you can do with Ultra. Now you can start to get your settings together while you're building the exam, or you can just build your test first and then rearrange your settings. So let's take a look at that. All right. You can see here, again, this is just another example of how you can configure your settings. They're asking you things like, do you want your feedback to be available after your students submit the exam? So again, you can do this while you're building the test simultaneously, you know, building the test as well as um, creating the settings that work for your course or you can also go to the gear icon and we can look at some new options here. So once you've built your test, now is where you can kind of customize these settings. And so uh, there's a brand new one. Again, if you taught this past semester with Ultra. Um, Matt, that's a great question. Let me get to that in just a moment. Um, so now you have this option where you can post the assessment grades automatically. So this means that when the assessment is graded, the, the students can automatically see their grades. So this is a brand new feature. This wasn't here before. Uh, but there are other things that you can consider here when you click on the, um, the gear icon, when you go to customize the settings. So anytime you ever see that gear icon in Ultra, that's your cue that you can customize things. So these are some of the questions that you can ask yourself. When should students be able to open and review their submitted, ex their submitted exam? Um, should they be able to go back and review it right away? Or once it's been submitted, should they not be able to get back into it until their grades have posted? Um, or until all the grades have posted? That's another option. When should the grades post? Do you want to manually control that or do you want Blackboard to do it for you? Uh, also, when should the feedback and the correct scores display for students? So these are all of the different things that you can consider. Uh, no two courses are the same, and so instructors are going to have different preferences for this, and so that's why they want you to customize what works best for you. So I do see a couple of questions coming in here in the chat, so let me see if I can get to those. Um, Matt, is there any way to make either one of the two answers correct and to receive full credit? Um, you've tried it in the past, and if students pick one, they only get half credit. Um, not that I'm aware of, but I'll double check and see if anything has changed with the settings. Um, see if there's any way to override that. But um, 
As far as I know, that's still not an available option, but I'm willing to explore that. So let me test that a little bit more and I'll, I'll get back to you after the workshop. And Stephanie, is there just the score or can they see the, the questions? So that's um, one of the levels of customization here. You can decide separately when the, the scores post versus um, when they can go back in to see the, the questions. Great. So now that we've looked at the customization for the exam, because this does help expedite the grading process, we need to know when our students can access this information. When can they see their score versus when can they see their feedback? You might not want that to be on the exact same day. Um, but then we can also take a look at the grade book for the exams. And so these are some of the features that we have available. Uh, by default, I believe the automatic zeros are turned on. You've got the text box editor. So this is where you can provide you know, a little bit of uh, feedback for your students, some, some different types of, of commentary, things of that nature. You also have the option to change credit for all. So this is maybe where you've looked at an exam question and your students raised a valid point and you realized you know, maybe this question wasn't as clear as it could have been. I'm just going to give everybody full credit, you know, kind of wipe the slate uh, clean. You can do that here from the grade book, and that's, I think, what you can see um, in the image there. And you can also use a grading rubric, but we're going to get to the grading rubric a little bit more in the next section when we get to assignments, so maybe you can pause on that part for just a moment. The automatic zero is, again, another function where you can choose whether you want it on or off, and again, I do believe it's toggled on initially, but you can turn it off. And so this works well for some instructors. And an example of this might be if you had five different um, exams or five different quizzes and your students only had to do four out of the five, um, you might not want to give them a zero for the one they don't do, right? So you can turn off the automatic zeros. That way it doesn't look like your students didn't do some of their work and they won't get as confused about the score in their class. So that's something to keep in mind. But otherwise, automatic zeros tend to be uh, highly favorable for instructors. It means that if somebody didn't turn in their homework, it automatically shows up as a zero in the grade book. It's a good indicator for the instructor as well as the student where they're at with their progress. And if a student submits something late, you can, of course, override the automatic zero. So nothing permanent there. Any other questions or we can move on, I think, to assignments? Oh, and the one other thing that I forgot to mention, which I think since all of you have been teaching in Ultra, is the grade pill for your students will change colors uh, depending on their performance. So if they have an A, it turns green. Um, if they start to slip, if they get closer to the C to D range, things kind of start to get yellow. Red is a good indicator that someone's not doing well in the course. Oh, okay, I forgot, we have one other part here. Um, the gradebook sorting also has a couple of different options for you. So of course we do have um, two different views. Now you can do the grid view or the list view. By default, the first view that you see is the list view, but you can choose whichever you prefer. The grid is more the um, kind of mimics an Excel spreadsheet view. It's this idea that your grade book has the list of student names going down the left, and then it's got all of the um, assignments or graded assessments going across the top. So in the grid view, um, I think that one's fairly self-explanatory. The list is brand new. This is uh, something unique to Ultra. From there, if you choose the list view, you can decide how you want to filter. Do you want to see the list of assessments that, that are being graded in the course, or do you just want to skip straight to a specific student? So you can toggle back and forth there to see what you prefer. It also will tell you if something needs to be graded, 
or if there's nothing to grade. If it needs to be graded, your student has submitted their assessment and now it's the instructor's turn to grade and provide feedback. If there's nothing to grade, that means that your students have not submitted anything. And it keeps a running tally as students turn things in, so the number may change. And then from there, you also have your option for need to post versus complete it. So again, this is that level of customization. You can grade your student assessments as they come in, but you might want to wait to post the grades until all of them have been submitted. And so that's kind of a nice feature there. You can, you can keep grading as they appear, um, but you can hold off on when you want those grades to be visible to the students. And once they are visible to the students, you'll know it because it says it's been completed. So um, I think the only other one that I have up there on the screen is draft save, which indicates that the students have uh, started to work on their assessment, but they have not submitted it yet. But there's activity brewing. Okay. So let's take a look at assignments. Now, I know I didn't show you uh, some of the options for graphics and images in exams, and that's because they're actually the same controls in assignments and tests. So we just kind of compiled it all into one section here. So we'll get to that in this section. One of the things that I wanted to talk about first um, is this idea of enabling conversations. Now, I know this is not a graded assessment, but it is a good way to provide feedback to your students and to check in with them to see if they have any questions or concerns. So enabling conversations is not to be confused with a graded discussion. Conversations are informal. Students can ask questions and anybody can respond. So some of these things may be answered by their peers. So you're not the only one monitoring this kind of chat, if you will. And when you enable conversations, it comes up as a purple chat bubble, hence the, the little icon there at the top of the screen. So how do you enable conversations? Well, typically anytime you see that gear icon, that's your indication that you can turn on class conversations. So I have a little picture of that as well. And then on the side of the screen, you're going to see seven different options for where you can enable these conversations. So it's really nice. When you enable a conversation, you're doing it um, kind of at the item level. If I turn them on, it's for a specific maybe assignment or a specific test. Um, I'm not turning it on for every single thing in my course. So you can pick and choose and be strategic about how you want to enable this feature. One of the newest ones that I found was uh, you can now use it for group assignments. So that was actually kind of new for me. Uh, and this one means that now if your, your group members have questions for each other, they can have this informal chat just amongst their group. Um, so that's another great feature that, that they've recently added to the list. All right. Our next option here is that we can incorporate multimedia. And this works on a variety of levels for our students. It's a great way to engage our online learners, or even if you're teaching a hybrid course, it gives them something to look at other than text. So this can be a little bit different from Blackboard Original. And so we do get a lot of questions on how do I do this? Where do I add my videos? So uh, you're going to look for your text box editor. So, um, and again, I said this works for assignments as well as for um, exams. And you'll look for a little purple plus button. I did put a red box around it. Now, if you are using NIU's video platform for inserting videos, which I highly recommend because it doesn't eat up any of your precious course data, you're going to look for the little shopping cart that says content market. And from there, you'll choose, you'll scroll down. It'll give you all these different options and it's alphabetical, I believe. So you have to scroll down and look for Keltura video. Um, so that does get a little confusing for people. They don't know where to look. Um, we definitely didn't have a content market in Blackboard original. So I did want to make that distinction for you. Or you can do other things. You can add a YouTube video. So, um, We've got all these different options, and I just wanted you to be aware that this is a great way to engage your students for an assignment or for an exam. This is where you could ask them to watch a clip of a video and then respond based on what they observed. 
Okay. And I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about using this tool for your students. Adding images, adding multimedia is not just something that the instructor can do. And I think that's something that we may uh, feel tempted to do because we're, we're planning and facilitating this environment and we're thinking about all the components we need to include. Uh, but we can ask our students to do the same thing. So your students also have the same option available. So if you would like them to record a video, maybe you, know, you want them to record a welcome video, um, that's perfectly reasonable. Everybody has access to Kaltura and I use video platform. Um, and when they go to add it, they're going to follow the same steps. They're going to look for the purple plus button and they're going to add the um, video from Kaltura through the content market. Additionally, your students have some other options that they can use for submitting their content to you. So they can attach things such as images. If they want to attach an image, they would use the little paper clip icon um, and they could attach an image that they've saved to their computer. Uh, so they can attach these things to maybe a specific question on an assignment or a test, or they can wait until the very end of their assignment or test. And as an instructor, if you enabled additional content, they can upload items for you. So this is particularly beneficial if you want to see their scratch paper, or maybe if you want to see um, something visual. What if you had your students develop a flow chart? These are all things where your students can upload them and attach them to their submission, and it's not tied to a specific question. Hope that was clear. Any questions on that? And again, as an instructor, you have the option if you want them to have the ability to upload um, additional content. So that is a toggle switch as well. Okay, sounds quiet. We'll go on. All right, we also have grading rubrics. Now, the one drawback to grading rubrics right now, which is why I didn't put it with exams, is that they currently do not work with assessments that contain questions. They're working on that. That will probably change shortly. So in the meantime, grading rubrics typically work best with assignments, where maybe you just gave them a specific set of instructions and then students will upload their submission. Right? It's not tied to a multiple choice question or things of that nature. When you use the grading rubrics, it can really expedite your grading process. Um, so this is what you see up here on the screen. When you use a rubric built in Blackboard Ultra, you click on each of the cells. So for instance, I think I clicked on completeness here, 15 points possible. As soon as I click on completeness, it gives me the three different options that I selected when I built my grading rubric, exceeds expectations, meets expectations, or does not meet expectations. When I click on that, it automatically updates the score for the student. I'm not doing a grade override. I'm not manually entering what number I think the student should receive. It's keeping a running tally based on the rubric that I created and you have some different options for feedback. You can provide overall feedback, how they did on this particular assignment, or they have what they call criterion feedback, which is smaller detailed feedback. It talks about their completeness, or if I want to talk to them about their organization, I can leave specific commentary in that section. We also have Blackboard Annotate, which is customizable feedback feedback. And this is actually one of my favorite tools. So this is the uh, that we are going to really give some detailed feedback for our students. And so these are some of the things that work for assignments specifically, not for exams. You have the ability to comment at a specific point or by highlighting the text. You can see a running tally or it's basically I think they call it a sidebar summary view of all of your comments. So you can go back and review all of your comments for an entire submission. You've got options for things like highlighting, uh, marking the text, color, strike through, squiggles. Uh, so this can be really helpful if, again, your student submitted maybe a chart, right? Um, and you want to explain, hey, you didn't consider these um, other variables please consider X, Y, and Z and expand, right? 
Um, there are shapes, arrows, rectangles, things like that. Um, customizable stamps and images. But um, probably the number one thing that I, I think about when I think about Blackboard Annotate is this idea of the content library. And so this allows you to create a bank of your reusable comments for um, frequent feedback. So my background's in English. And if I notice that my students had a lot of grammar errors or frequent cit citation mistakes, I can go ahead and I can uh, save my feedback and I can reuse it. So the next time a student has the same mistake, I can just choose that pre-saved content library of uh, comment and feedbacks, and I don't have to type it over and over again for my students. So this is definitely um, a game changer as far as saving time and, and streamlining the grading process. Great, Stephanie, I'm, I'm glad you like it. So it is specific to assignments, um, and I do wanna make that you know, distinction for you, uh, but a, a really great useful tool. And yes, the content library, um, this is considered Blackboard Annotate, and content library is inside of the um, Blackboard Annotate. It is available in Original as well as Ultra. Great question. All right, one of the things that's unique to Ultra specifically is group and individual grading. This is actually my personal favorite um, feature that they have going right now. When you divide your students up into groups, you have the option um, to provide feedback for the group as well as the individual. So you can give them the same overall score uh, initially, but then you can go back in there and you can also change uh, scores for the individual and you can also give uh, feedback to the individual. And this is all done from the grade book in Ultra. So I, I'm gonna show you an example of what this looks like. So here I have new group one. There's five different members. Now, as a group, I would say that they earned probably a 75 out of 100, but as you can see, the Megan Holt preview user was doing an exceptional job. And so this particular student got 95 out of 100. And it's very nice because they're not sharing that information necessarily with their peers. You know, Sean Connery can only see that he got a 75%. He doesn't know that Megan Holt preview user got 95%. So um, again, you can see both pieces and from the same spot in the grade book. You can see the group, um, but then you can also see the individual and you can make adjustments as needed. So again, I, I think I'll go back to that screen just briefly here. So you can see the two tabs, group, feedback or individual feedback. So um, that's actually probably one of my favorite features. That was something that was not available in original. All right, so we're making excellent time. Uh, we can move on to discussion boards. So the discussion boards in Ultra have been more simplified with their settings and their controls. And I think why they've done this is to help people reimagine what discussion boards can look like. Blackboard Original um, kind of got a reputation for having a very prescriptive um, dynamic. And so usually what happened was this idea that there was one original post due on a certain date, and then students were supposed to follow up and maybe respond to one or two of their peers by another date, um, which you can still do in Ultra, but they're trying to allude to this fact that there are other options available. So we'll take a look at what that looks like. So when we go to look at the um, settings for a discussion board, and again, we're gonna always look for that gear icon in the right corner when you create your discussion board. Um, you've got things like post first, so that should probably still be a familiar concept. You know, Before you can see what everybody else wrote, the student has to create their own original submission first. Is it graded? Um, and that's about it. You'll notice there's only one due date. So it doesn't have the, the multiple due dates. When is the first post due by and when is the second post or the third post due by? Um, so, so that may throw you off a little bit, 
but it's very streamlined in how it looks in the grade book. So here's an example, right? If I go to the grade book and I want to see uh, what the Megan Holt preview user did, I'll see all of her posts here. So I can see the original post as well as the follow-up post. So again, it's very streamlined. I'll know if I put in the, in the instructions that they had to do multiple posts, I'll know when she did them and everything is date and time stamped. So, and I can provide feedback, you know, your responses are not long enough, or, you know, did you consider X, Y, and Z? Um, so they, they made it kind of a little bit less clunky, I think is how I'll put it. And so again, here's an example of what you can do um, with your discussion board post. So, you know, please upload a three to five minute video documenting your experiment and your results, um, then respond to two of your peers. And so in my instructions, I would tell them when is the first post due versus when are the peer follow-ups due. And again, I could direct my students on how to upload their video by going to click on that purple plus button and then looking for the content market. I really like using discussion boards for um, things like pictures, images, uh, videos, things like that, because in a discussion board, that means that students can see other things that their peers have submitted. And it, while it does work well for a test or, you know, an assignment, remember that those graded assessments only come to you. If you use the discussion board, that means that you've almost created a gallery where students can see their peers' work. So, so kind of think about some of the options that you have here if you use a discussion board. And so here's my example for you. You can add images. So this is actually um, something that I've done. I had, it's a matching exercise. I, I created this image myself um, and I uploaded it from my, from my computer. But here I, I've given my students, you know, kind of another option for how they can uh, interact, what they can see other than text. You know, I'm going to ask them to match the flower to its name, right? So I, I've created kind of this interaction for them. And I know on the screen it says assignment content, but again, the, the actual function itself is the same. Um, for adding something to a test, an assignment, or a discussion board. You'll either use that paperclip icon or the little purple plus button. Oh, and I did also give you a hint here on the screen. If you ever do not see your um, text box editor, hover your mouse in the middle of the screen as an instructor and a little purple plus button will appear. And then you're going to look for the T that says add text. And that's how you'll find this bar. It gives you all the options with the paper clip or the plus button. So that's just a helpful hint for you. All right. We also have group discussion boards, which um, again has been very streamlined in Ultra. So once you click on that gear icon in the top right corner of your discussion settings, you can assign to groups. So you do have to assign this before students begin uh, responding. If they start su submitting things and then you want to go and divide them up into groups, it won't let you do that. But you have four basic options. The custom creation is where you decide who goes in which group. You could do random assignment and Blackboard will shuffle up the, the names of your students and will assign them to groups. And you can decide how many students you want per group. So um, that part is controlled by you. And even if you don't like their assignment, for instance, maybe you realize that, you know, two students keep ending up in the same group. I really need to divide them up. You can drag and drop and, and still, you know, manipulate it that way. Self-enroll is another great option. Maybe you want to give your students a topic and let them choose which one appeals uh, to them. So then they can do self-enrollment and you can set parameters for how many people are allowed per group. So if one fills to capacity, they'll have to go with their second pick. 
we do have reuse groups um, and that's really nice. So if you have already created groups for a previous assignment or a previous discussion board, um, Blackboard Ultra retains a memory of it and you can just select reuse. So again, a, a nice time saver for you as an instructor. So I think that is all that I had for you. I know it was a little bit quick, but we've got about um, 10 minutes or so for, for questions or if you need a demonstration for anything. So I'm gonna open it up to all of you. Are there, are there anything that I can answer for you? Matt, go ahead. Yeah, so like I, like I had said earlier, I was, um, I was interested in how the assignments are, could work and, and specifically, so the way you demonstrate it is the way I've been doing it, um, where I, well, like, I'll upload a file, I'll have the students complete it, and then, um, and then I'll go in and, and provide the comments within the, um, the, the uh, platform. But uh, do you have any tips on trying to kind of combine the elements of both the, the, tests you described and the assignments because I know I've saw that I've seen in the past when I go to upload an assignment there's options to put in questions for an assignment that is graded as an assignment but I've never tried to do that do you have any tips for pulling that off or is it really just kind of like using everything I know about the two different uh graded graded portions and just trying to like trial and error essentially no that's a great question so um, I, I think what you're discovering there is even though Blackboard says, oh, we have tests and we have assignments, if you actually look at them, um, they are largely configured the same and they've just kind of segregated them um, by, by title. Um, and that's maybe to help with the grade book, you know, to, to say that they have different classifications for each. Um, but they do largely work the same. So, um, you know, if you create an assignment, you can give your, your students, um, your assignment could have questions. It could have, you know, multiple choice questions. It could have matching. It could have, you know, short answer, just like a test could. Um, so are, do, is there anything specific that you want to see with that? Not really. I, I was interested to see if you had any specific examples for doing that. Um, I, ultimately, I think it's just about me going in and playing around with it. Um, but there was, yeah, there's nothing specifically I, I was looking at. It was more of just like how to how to simulate the assignments I've been giving in, in a static Word document to try and get those into a more dynamic uh, format that's easily gradable because that, that's what I'm facing now is that, you know, with that static document, I go in and then I read it and, and I have to grade it as such. Most of it is automatic, but it still takes time. If I can try to automatically get those, those scores in, um, it would just save a lot of time and get the grades back to the students faster. So I think it's really just about going in and playing around with it. Um, so at the, very, at the very least, you kind of confirmed what I already suspected. You know, you've got a couple of different options depending on how you structure your course. So a couple of things that come to mind for that is, um, you know, you could set something up where you could grade offline submissions, which might be really nice. Like maybe if they're doing something in your class um, face to face that, you, you know, you're grading their, their presentation. Um, that's something that you could do that'll help you out. It'll create a grade column for you, but it's not just a Word document that you have to go and review in your grade book. Um, you could do some other things like if you're reusing um, exam questions um, or, or assignment questions, whether either one, whichever you prefer, um, you can use a pool of existing questions. So they maybe if your assignment is a review session, um, that's something that you can reuse that's already there for you um, and you can make it an auto graded um, assessment. So I think you've got some options for that as well. Um, or again, you might ask your students um, to submit some of their own original coursework. Um, and instead of you always having to grade it, you can also set up something like the uh, peer reviewers. I, I think that might actually help you as well. 
Um, so, so give them a rubric and, and ask somebody else to assess their work and provide feedback so it's not always you. That, that's a really good uh, strategy for you there as well. Um, so I know I didn't include that on the slides, but I, I do think you have some options. Tanya, I do see your hand raised as well. I wanted to make sure that I got to your question. Um, can you guys see me? I can't. I, I always feel weird when I'm not, <laughs> not talking to them. I can't see you, but okay, you don't have to turn your camera on if you don't like to. Working out, so I look kind of spastic here, so bear with me. Um, but my question or clarification, um, Megan, would be the, the grade rubric that you kind of showed as a demonstration. How does that work? Like, do you, I, I guess my, my, I need clarification. Like, do you upload the rubric that you have? You have to construct it. I'm a little fuzzy on it. I'd like to use that option if I could, but I, I just think I could use some clarity on how that works. Yeah, absolutely. So let me turn this off. 